concept of European Golden Visas need very little introduction. In this video, I am going to share with you the main differences between the Spanish Golden Visa program and the Portugal Golden Visa program. And this will help you to determine the pros and the cons of each and help you make your investment decision. My name is Alana and I work for Magronis. We are a global citizenship and residency by investment company. Let's go. There are multiple questions that investors ask me when we start this conversation. So I've prepared a graph for you that will appear in this video and there'll also be a link below that you can follow that shares with you all the key differences between these two programs. The very first question I'm asked is, what is this going to cost me? In other words, what are the different investment criteria when you compare these two programs? Now, the majority of investors in both the Spanish Golden Visa and the Portugal Golden Visa program invest in real estate. And if we just compare the real estate tables, the Spanish Golden Visa requires a minimum real estate investment of 500,000 euros. And the Portugal program has a variety of categories on the real estate side. It starts at 280,000 euros in less densely populated areas. You can invest 350,000 euros. If you're investing in renovation or regeneration areas in the capital, you can invest all the way up to 500,000 euros. So there's a, there's a range of properties available on the Portugal side. Whereas on the Spanish side, 500,000 is the minimum and you can invest in any kind of property anywhere in Spain. So a little bit less restriction, but less option as well. I think the main difference on the real estate side is that Spain has significantly more properties available to invest in. It's a much larger country and there's a, and there's a bit more diversity. So, so people have different, different investment options. If we look at the other ways in which people can uh, qualify for Golden Visa, not that popular, but options nonetheless. So worth taking note of. In Spain, you can invest a million euros in company shares or capitalize a bank account for a million euros, or you can invest two million euros in government bonds. Now, I often get asked because of that bond option available in Spain, if Portugal has the same. And, and the answer is no, there isn't a government bond option available uh, in Portugal. But if we look at what is available, there's multiple other investment routes that you can follow other than real estate. An increasingly popular investment route for people investing in the Portugal Golden Visa program is the private equity and venture capital sector. There's a whole separate episode on that and you can follow the link here to find a bit more information on that. Um, but in short, it requires that you invest half a million euros in either a private equity or a venture capital fund and those funds will then invest in underlying assets in Portugal. That becomes very interesting for investors because of different tax benefits. If we look at the other opportunities in Portugal, you can, for instance, capitalize a company with 500,000 euros and create five permanent jobs and qualify for your golden visa that way. You can invest one and a half million euros in a Portugal bank account and get your golden visa that way. Remember that that one and a half million euros has to remain invested for five years during your residency period. The last category that's quite interesting and not specifically part of Golden Visa is called the HQA or the Highly Qualified Applicant Visa. This visa allows entrepreneurial investors to spend 175,000 euros and partner with a local university where they will create an R&D setup and an incubator structure around your business idea. You will own the IP, the university will sponsor your arrival in Portugal and you will be able to create a business that belongs to you, but it's not part of the golden visa. So you have to be a successful entrepreneur already to be able to qualify for that visa, but also becoming increasingly popular as a route to, to get your residency in Portugal. The next point that's very important is what are the residency requirements for both these programs? In other words, how do you become a resident and how do you maintain that residency? So in the case of Spain, you only require one biometrics visit to have your first residency permit for two years issued. Thereafter, your residency permit is issued for five years. In the case of Portugal, you get at the moment a residency permit for two years and you have to return and visit for seven days per year or two weeks every two years to be able to renew your residency permit for another two years. So in the case of Portugal, your residency permit renews every two years and after five years of residency, you are allowed to apply for permanent residency. One of the points that actually makes a big difference when you make this decision of where to invest is what your ultimate goal is. If it is citizenship, then you have to be aware of how the citizenship is obtained in both countries. In the case of Spain, you have to actually become a tax resident in Spain and live there permanently for five years out of a 10 year period before you are allowed to apply for citizenship. 
In the case of Portugal, a significant difference between the two programs is that there is no permanent stay requirement in Portugal before you are allowed to apply for citizenship. So with your seven days per year or two weeks per two years visit, you are actually legally resident and are allowed to apply for citizenship without permanently living in Portugal. In both Spain and Portugal's case, you also have to comply with the language requirements. So you have to pass either a Spanish level A2 language test or a Portuguese level A2 language test. One of the big differences between the programs is how people are able to include dependents and that makes a difference between which of the programs you choose. So if we look at the case of Spain, let's first look at dependent children. You can only include your children up to the age of 21. In the case of Portugal, you can include a dependent child regardless of age, provided that they are single, financially dependent on you and in full-time studies for the full duration of the residency program. If we have a look at parents, in the case of Spain, you can only include your parents if they are 65 and older and if they are completely dependent on you. In the case of Portugal, you can include a parent at the age of 55 and older if they're dependent. And interestingly enough, under Portuguese law, as soon as a parent becomes 65 or older, they are automatically considered dependent on parents. So you can include them at that stage. There are three things that are pretty similar between the two programs. The first is that in both cases, once you receive your golden visa, you will also have a work permit to be employable in the country. In both cases, you will have access to free healthcare, free public healthcare. And in both cases, you will have free access to public schooling for your children. Private schools, of course, will remain, uh, will remain at your cost. The next point is security. If we look at the World Population Review, you will see that Spain ranks 31st in terms of the most peaceful countries in the world to live in. In comparison, Portugal is significantly safer and ranks fourth in the world. So if security is a concern, keep that in mind. A big topic of conversation is always taxes. I never have a conversation without people asking me to compare the tax regimes. Now, Spain is not known for particularly friendly taxes in terms of individual taxes, and they don't have any specific uh, dispensation or tax dispensation that will make this road for you easier. On the other hand, Portugal offers the NHR or the non habitual tax regime and there's more information in the link in the video below, you can have a look at that. But it basically offers an investor a, a 10 year tax break on pensionable income or fixed income that they earn from outside the country. So the taxes is important to compare. In summary then, what, what are the main differences between these programs? In the case of Spain, there is significantly more real estate available to choose from and the stay requirement is different. However, if you want citizenship, you really have to be sure that you want to live in Spain because you have to be there permanently for five years before you can apply for citizenship. On the other hand, Portugal offers multiple different categories of real estate investment as well as fund investment, which is very attractive. It offers the NHR, the Non-Habitual Tax Treaty, which gives you a tax break. And it also has a very low stay requirement that will allow you to apply for citizenship without actually physically living in Portugal. So those are the main differences between the programs. If you find this information useful, then please do subscribe to the channel and, and like the video. I would very much like to hear from you, so please add your comments in the section below and send me a WhatsApp on my number below and I will give you some feedback and respond to you on your inquiries. Thank you. See you next time.